Hello, statisticians, and welcome to section 8.3 Excel tips for finding a confidence interval for a population proportion. Remember, with population proportions, that's different than a mean, which we saw in the prior videos. With proportions, we're talking about the number of successes out of a total. This might be, for example, the number of people who supported a candidate divided by the total number of voters, giving us a decimal or a percent, that proportion that supported the candidate. Or it might be the total number of widgets that were made defective out of the total number of widgets made by the machine, giving you a percent or a decimal. Those are proportions. Because we're dealing with a proportion and not a mean, the formulas are different and the Excel commands are slightly different. One thing that's nice about proportions, though, is proportions will always use the normal distribution. We never have to decide which distribution to use with a proportion. As soon as you recognize we're talking about a proportion, we're going to use the normal distribution. Now, when it comes to Excel commands, unlike the mean, there is no Excel command to help us find the error. So we have to use the formula for the error that our textbook gave us. That error is equal to the critical value times the square root, which we can do SQRT, open a parentheses, the proportion of the sample, which is p hat, times 1 minus the p hat, divided by n, or the sample size, and then close the parentheses on the square root. If we're asked to find the critical value that's going to be used in that formula, we can get that from the normal distribution, because proportions always use the normal distribution. That command is equals norm dot s, because it's a standard normal, dot i and v, open a parentheses, and then we're going to take our alpha, which is what remains after the confidence percentage, and divide it by 2, because half of it shows up in each tail. Similar to what we found out with the mean is this will probably give us a negative value. We're going to use the positive version of that for our actual critical value. So for example, we have a sample of 183 people, and it turns out 28 of them are left-handed. We're going to find a 90% confidence interval and interpret the result. Well, first we actually have to find out the proportion of left-handed people that we're talking about, and we can do that simply by dividing our numbers. We can say equals, there were 28 left-handed people out of 183. When I hit enter, we find out that our proportion is 0.153005. For the critical value, because we're using a normal distribution, we say equals norm dot s dot i and v, open a parentheses, and if we want a 90% confidence interval, the alpha is the 10% left over, and with the normal we have to divide by 2 so that we know we're splitting it between the two tails. Close the parentheses and hit enter, and we see that our critical value is 1.64485. Again, remember, we're going to change that to the positive version of that. To calculate the margin of error, then, we'll just use our error formula, which is equal to the critical value, which I will just select. Notice I'm using the positive one. Be careful to use the positive one. Times the square root of the p hat. That's our sample proportion, which we just calculated. I'll just go ahead and click that. Times open a parentheses, 1 minus the p hat, so I'll click that proportion again, close the parentheses, divided by the sample size. We said there were 183 people. Close the parentheses on the square root, and when I hit enter, this tells me the margin of error, that my proportion from the sample of 15% is off by as much as 4.3%, or 0.043. So to calculate my lower and upper bounds, I just have to subtract and add this value to the proportion that we calculated. For the lower bound, we'll say equals. I'll select the proportion and subtract. Select the error. Enter. For the upper bound, I can say equals. Select the proportion and add the error by selecting the error. And now we've got our lower and upper bounds that are used for this confidence interval. The interpretation is where we give it meaning and context. What are we talking about? What do these bounds tell us? We can say that we are 90% confident the true proportion of left-handed people is between 0.109234 and 0 0.196777.
Proportions are a little easier because we always use the normal distribution. We don't have to decide which distribution to use. 